All right, so welcome in to our live stream today. We are going to dive in to stable coins and also the rewards that are floating around there in the crypto sphere and where and what you might should be doing with them. So my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Let's get into it a little bit around stable coins. The concept of today's video is to really understand, one, where are some of the stable coin values out there? For some of you who are maybe parking uh, some cash on the side, getting ready for whether it's investment in the metaverse, maybe you're looking at some of the gains that you're seeing right now, maybe you've taken some gains. This is one of those videos you don't want to miss. Uh, before we get started, let's thank our sponsors, which is iTrust Capital. Big deal on iTrust Capital is they've got this new program where you're no longer paying their monthly fees and you're going to get a hundred bucks in Bitcoin by just using our link below in setting up your crypto IRA. What we'll be talking about today, it has a few tax ramifications, but with crypto IRA, that's the best tax ramification because you pay no taxes and all those gains until you do your cash out when you're retired. So a lot different kind of scenario there. One thing about uh, iTrust is their cryptocurrency allocations and what they uh, have available now, which has grown dr tremendously just in the last 30 days. But, you know, the typical, of course, Cardano, Bat Token now, Engine is in there, Algorand, good one, Atom, great one. Uh, you've got Curve, the DAO in there, Solana, Ave, Polygon, Yearn, Sushi, and you can kind of just see Bitcoin, Cash, wouldn't go there, uh, Compound, Uniswap, Stellar, Doge even in the, in the uh, hunt, and then, of course, the big ones uh, in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Avalanche, one of my favorite ones, which has entered into the space. Also, another one coming to iTrust that they mentioned earlier uh, this month is that Axie is going to be coming over to uh, iTrust Capital. So that's a cool thing. If you are looking at trying to diversify your portfolio, uh, very low trading fees. It's a 1% trading fee when you're inside the ecosystem of, the, of your iTrust Capital account. So it's much like what you would do out there on a traditional exchange. So definitely check them out. Uh, it's one of the projects that I really get into in terms of supporting and sponsor as a sponsor. So uh, use the link below and you get the 100 bucks on Bitcoin for setting up your account. Let's get into it today. We'll try to cover on some of the topics uh, around where are some of the best potential values on both stablecoin staking, but also on some of the reward projects that are out there because we've, we've had a couple of videos that really have dove into uh, a variety of those different options. Uh, we'll dive into some of those, give you a whole list of uh, stuff to look at, all kinds of cool stuff that uh, can kind of get you guys moving in that right direction. And of course, I want to hear from you. So make sure and put your comments over on the question. Uh, and Because we'll, I'd love to kind of hear where, where are you staking or where are you getting the best rewards? What platform is working for you? What tokens? seem to be uh, flying for you. And we'll take questions and get into some of that. Of course, we'll, we'll take general questions as well around metaverse gaming. All coins got a lot happening uh, over there on that space. Let's jump to this first story. Uh, Double Terra Treat, UST launches on Nexo with uh, their Lunatic promo. And the point is pretty straightforward. You're going to be able to essentially stake or uh, get rewards on Terra now in the Terra ecosystem as it now is exposed or has now moved on to Nexo as a potential. So uh, they're announcing that Nexo users can now buy and convert, borrow against, and earn up to 20% APR on Terra USD. Now I will warn you about Nexo, not that it's a bad thing, but just make sure and read the fine print on all of these different platforms when you are putting money in those platforms. Make sure you understand that there are rules and most likely some conditions that apply into uh, the scenario that you're looking at. So in this particular case, you can buy UST on Nexo, so actually purchase it there, uh, using your bank card or account balance and get it in your wallet within seconds. Uh, there's probably some fees there that I would watch out for in terms of any kind of credit card usage. And then, of course, you get high promo yields up to 20% paid out daily, which is a good thing. I think the daily payouts are good. Um, some of the monthly payouts, I use uh, several platforms that use monthly play payouts, but I'm okay with that uh, because of the kind of assets that I might stake or look to gain rewards on. So that's a little bit different. Also, you can exchange. Uh, so you can convert to and from UST on Nexo. Uh, instantly with pairs including UST to USDT and then UST to be, uh, Bitcoin, of course, and six more. Um, double Uni Uni Luna yields, uh, UST and Exos, no small feat on its own existing. I like the fact that they are um, 
really trying to double the base earn rate for Terra's uh, program. This is going to happen until March 1st, so it's not much longer, but at least you do have some uh, potential here on Luna if you're holding it uh, as well. So something to think about here, especially as you are gaining both these rewards and additional tokens, if you're being paid out in tokens, which most projects or most platforms do, is what is the tax ramification of this? Now, there's been a recent scenario with the IRS. This is a piece right here. IRS waves white flag, lawsuit over taxability of cryptocurrency staking rewards. Just so we're clear, this is not the capital gains of of token uh, gains. This is in reference to staking rewards that the, you get back in tokens. And essentially what the ruling came out to say was this. Uh, and this was celebrated um, as part of an ongoing federal litigation. This was Jarrett versus United States. The government has offered to refund the plaintiff, Joshua Jarrett, for the taxes he paid when he created new property through staking. So when you park, let's say USDC, and you're paid back in USDC, that essentially is identified as new property, those rewards. And because of that, it's not taxable until you actually take them out. So uh, so that's a big deal with, with how this might work. And when you look at staking moving forward, uh, this was something that they wanted to do. And th this I thought was interesting because he, he paid when he created the new property through staking, uh, a sign that the IRS may longer, no longer attempt to tax tokens created through staking rewards, but... but Despite his victory, he's going to continue the case without, uh, mainly so he can get to a point where there's going to be nothing to prevent the IRS from challenging him again on the issue. So he's really trying to get a landmark decision here on this. And I think if this comes through, the IRS is going to really be in a, a very interesting position that they will have to treat these rewards as potentially as uh, property, and which will change the tax component in a big way. And I think that's one of the things we've started to see a lot more staking and also just reward taking and projects that are starting to promote that they're doing rewards uh, as being a big thing. And of course, this has been happening just over the past few weeks because of this, um, this scenario. No precedent. IRS court settlement doesn't clarify crypto staking, uh, staking taxes. And this is something that was a little bit of a confusion because let me kind of zoom up on this for you. Not longer after this news made headlines, confusion among the crypto community uh, peaked. One crypto media pub, I won't say who, sent a tweet from its official account saying, breaking, IRS will not tax unsold staked crypto as income. Uh, the tweet generated over 4,000 retreats and so forth. So that was kind of the, the misspoken element. It's really just talking about the rewards that you've gained, not your total um, crypto you know, position. So... Uh, that in itself started kind of uh, creating a little bit of uh, some confusion in the market. But I think most of you guys understand that uh, fully. So I think that's the key thing is as you're starting to do these things, and one thing uh, I asked that you should be doing is um, make sure and consult a good tax attorney or tax advisor that really can start to guide you down this course. Now, there's a couple of them out there. Uh, we actually just dropped a, a little mini uh, guide. It was a video guide that you can find on the Diamond Circle. So when you join the Diamond Circle, you can go in, you'll have access to some of those guides. Uh, but we did one with a CPA and uh, he really dove into what you should be doing to prep for your tax position this year. So it's a great, uh, it's a great product. You guys should check it out. You know, just jump over to uh, Paul Barron Network. You'll be able to find it over there. All right, the other thing that is coming along here is, of course, the UK scenario, which is a tax regulator updating its guidance on staking and DeFi lending. Um, how proceeds from lending or staking are taxed depends on the nature of the returns, which could be hard to determine based on what they're saying. And there's a couple of uh, points they were trying to uh, clarify right here. This was the guidance that they published on Wednesday, how a return from Lending or staking is de uh, taxed depending on whether it's considered capital or revenue. And that's one thing that we'll probably see more and more of in the international climate, especially around how some of the tax laws work, especially in Europe. There are some variations there. So I know we are a global show. We get a lot of U.S. Uh, listeners and viewers, but we also have a ton in Europe and Asia and South America. So I'd love to kind of get your feedback on how your particular regulation scenario is working with a lot of these rewards. How are you guys being treated 
in your own countries or your own provinces uh, in regards to this particular scenario? Because we are seeing some movement. And of course, here in the U.S., when the IRS starts to get involved and we see these kind of cases start to open up, it actually does uh, does well for the global community because it usually addresses a lot of people who are in the same kind of boat in those kind of scenarios. So that's a good thing, I think, as the um, as a lot of the regulators are starting to understand this. But according to new guidance, this was, of course, uh, on Wednesday, how return from lending or staking is, to, is depend, it's going to uh, consider capital revenue, but it's deciding if a return is capital or revenue is complicated. The lending staking of tokens through decentralized DeFi is a consistently evolving area, so it's not possible to set out all the circumstances. To me, this tells me that they are being very loose on this guidance, and the likelihood is we're going to see a lot of modulation of what this tax law in these particular jurisdictions will do, meaning be aware that there's going to be some things that are really changing as this thing goes along. And I think that's going to be the biggest issue uh, around any of this. So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, and I want to jump at, look at a couple of areas here. And I just want to jump over to, let's go to this one right here. Yeah. Let's take a look at the top 10 assets staked by, assets by staked value. Uh, and if you look at it, you can kind of see Solana, of course, leading the pack right now. Uh, 24 hour minus a little bit down, but the reward is only 5.89%. Uh, but you can kind of see the stake value, definitely uh, the uh, behemoth here in terms of overall market. You've got Ethereum right here, very small rewards under 5%, uh, Cardano 5%, and then you get into Avalanche. This is where it starts to pick up, and we've seen some staking. Let me zoom up on that uh, a little bit, up upwards of 9% on Avalanche, which is a big uh, component. And then here's Terra, which is, uh, well, I think we're going to see a lot of pickup with Terra, especially in Europe. Uh, with this uh, essential staking rewards bonanza with with uh, Nexo, so that's a good one. Polkadot, on the other hand, has been nearing 14% for quite some time on a variety of different platforms. One of the ones that I use for Polkadot is Voyager. You know, they're paying that kind of staking reward, so that's a great opportunity. They do theirs every 30 days, and then it's credited into your each one of your token wallets as tokens of that particular token, so it's native to that. Hence, uh, the exact scenario that the Jarrett's were fighting in Tennessee against the IRS about trying to deal with that. So that's a good one. Uh, Binance Smart Chain, 8.2%. Uh, uh, Atom at 13%. This is a really good value for Atom uh, in terms of uh, staking. And the near protocol up almost 12%. And then Internet uh, Computer ICP coming in at 764 uh, and then you've tons more. If you guys just go to stakingrewards.com, you'll be able to find all of these passive income uh, listings and where and what is uh, and some of are the best programs to go with. So good one here. Another one with Luna is if you look at what Luna can do within the Anchor protocol, this is something we've talked about before. You're getting almost 20% APY uh, within Luna itself, and you kind of look at, let's let that paint out, you can kind of see a little bit around where the total value locked is right now at $9 billion UST. That's pretty amazing right there. Total deposit, $5 billion. Uh, total collateral at $3.8 billion. Uh, so not bad. And I think this will continue. Uh, Binance, and let's take a look at what you can do on Axie over there. Locked staking right now, look at that percentage, 104.6%. Uh, it is a 90-day lock uh, up, so just be aware. And the other thing to be uh, understand on this is only available to non-U.S. residents because uh, this is Binance.com, not Binance.us, so just be aware of that. But you can do a staking process if you own Axie and route that through, let's say, crypto.com. You route your tokens over to your MetaMask wallet, then your MetaMask wallet over to your Ron, Ron wallet, and then eventually right there into the stack, uh, the Axie staking protocol. So it gives you that capability. And I think last 
version. Let's jump over here to Ron real quick. Yeah, so it's holding at 80% on estimated rewards right now. A lot staked right here, so a lot happening in this one. I would still put Axie as my number one earner in terms of staked or rewards generated. Next to that, I would start to lean in on some of the stable coins. Even those are a ton of different um, layer ones and even layer twos that are out there doing some good uh, overall offerings in terms of staking. But if you are being conservative, but at the same time want to have a little bit of risk, then USDC and uh, Axie Infinity has been kind of one of the best that I feel is a good balance to kind of deal with both sides of the plate. A little bit risk and a lot more on the stable side itself. We're going to get to a poll real quick because I know you guys uh, love to put that in. Let's bring that one up. Are you currently staking uh, rewards? Wow, wow, 70, 67, almost 70% of you guys are. That's excellent. I love to see that in the audience because I think, it. one, if you're staking, it shows that you are, one, much more sophisticated in cryptocurrency. And I think that's something that we need to help foster the new users of cryptocurrency into because staking and also reward earning, other than just parking USDC in some of the exchanges, can be a little bit cumbersome. It's not an easy, you know, it's like trying to stake your Axie is not an easy process. You, you really do need to take the time to go about that. It's a process that you have to kind of learn how to do. Then you have to start trusting aspects that maybe you're not comfortable with, such as MetaMask wallets or even the RON token wallet. Um, those kind of things can start to put a little bit of defensive mechanisms up. So I think the fact that uh, we've got so many in the audience that are actually doing this now. Maybe that'll give a lot of people, you know, some faith and some understanding. This is really happening. We see a lot of people going in this direction. Axie Infinity, this was another thing right here. When we saw this movement in the tax position, this kind of showed the cumulative Axie staking uh, in U.S. dollars right here. And you can kind of see this little movement right here, early February, uh, going from what was 315 to almost, yeah, 1.4. Yeah, let's look at it right there. 1.3 to almost 1.4. Uh, that's pretty That's pretty amazing. I think when we see that kind of growth, because that's the only real uptrend outside of back here when they first started uh, initially showing stake. And remember, there were some big rewards with Axie Infinity. Now we're around 80%. So lots of, lots of differences there in comparison to some of the other projects on the place out there. I want to kind of get an idea of what tokens are you having more success on? Now, ones that I like is Polkadot. That's usually been around 14% uh, in the right places. And of course, Voyager is one place that you can do that with. And many others, Polkadot can be staked on a variety of different platforms. Another one that I think is still good uh, for staking is Matic. Um, and if you can find the right place to go out and do that on a variety of exchanges and also a different uh, variables on the ecosystem, uh, Matic is another one. And then, of course, USDC, Tether, uh, all those. Celsius has been really good about both USDC and Tether. If you are in, into loans, that's another opportunity where you can be, you can't be earning rewards if you're uh, pending loans against those. So just be aware of that uh, as you're going. We've done a video also on the loan breakouts and how that works uh, in comparison to should you maybe take a loan out on crypto, or would you just uh, put more money in to that particular crypto and then stake it and earn those rewards? Depending on the rewards, what we're seeing now is that's starting to balance out because a lot of these rewards are really coming up uh, for sure in terms of opportunity. So anyway, my bag is Axie, Polkadot, uh, USDC, Matic. Those are the ones that I really like uh, doing. Uh, in terms of stakes and staking and rewards, but I'm also starting to uh, play around with some other tokens just to kind of get an understanding of what and what that might look like, what it could be in terms of overall performance. Some of these are a little bit riskier uh, that's out there, but there's a lot of the uh, game projects, if you watch our show, around what gaming tokens we really kind of talk about quite a bit. Many, of, many times we'll see scenarios where you get opportunities to stake those. So just be aware when you are going into those riskier assets, uh, that you do have to be a little bit more cautious in the process for sure. Um, let's get into the questions and then we can kind of jump around because I know there's a lot of questions coming in for a variety of different areas. All right, Kryptonian, uh, stake after the bull run, not before. Uh, so here's the thing. I don't know. If it's not locked in, 
That's the key. If it's locked in, that's a problem. But if it's not locked in and you're still getting rewards, then it really is just sitting there in dry powder. So it gets you in a position where you can easily act on something, but at the same time, you're still earning. That's just good, you know, good uh, protocol in, in being able to manage your digital assets. Um, let's go to Stake on Binance. Nick Collin, I would agree with that for those of you who can reach Binance and not Binance US. Uh, Moshe, let's go. VGX has great staking rewards, good ones. I use uh, Voyager all the time. Uh, don't forget uh, Looks Rare. Yeah, that's another spot too because we are seeing more uh, opportunities in the NFT space that also open up to big rewards. Uh, Illuvium, yes, of course, definitely. Uh, I do like that one. The key there, I think, is, is do you own enough of a bit of a bag on Alluvium to do something like that uh, of being able to really kind of uh, gain? Axie is a beast coming over from John. Uh, absolutely right. Uh, Major Snuffy, definitely uh, looking at airdrops as we see a lot of these projects that are doing some interesting airdrops, which is phenomenal when you start to add to the, uh, the rewards themselves. So a lot happening there. All right, here's a good one from Jack Darby. Uh, not managed to catch you live until now. Um, I have now. Where did that go? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go here. I digress. What's your thoughts on UFO? Got a small pad. Personally believe in that there was what I think is where it's heading. All right, UFO. Uh, so UFO has been a project that has been on our top 20 multiple times. Uh, it has broken through here recently. It was actually on our top 20. And I think it might have been in the top 10 um, last week prior to the pump and then UFO, along with many of our other projects that we covered in our sentiment pre-pump on Metaverse that we're really moving. But I do like UFO and continue to, to really kind of fall in love with that one for sure. Uh, Veracity, yes, another big one. Veracity was way up on our list, by the way, on our sentiment number this week. So that one's really been coming. Um, if you all just buy and hold Axie and Sandbox, <laughs> we will all be crypto millionaires. I like that one. Sandbox and Axie, part of the uh, the Holy Trinity on that. And then uh, let's go into, uh, I've been staking ADA for the past two years, uh, but that coin is like watching pay dry. I got you. I know what you mean. Now there was one other thing that the guys wanted to show. And if I can find the SR staking on it, I may have closed that tab. Yeah, maybe. Yeah on that. Anyway, uh, living in the New York state, worse for crypto. Yes. Uh, very wary about some of the places that advertise high APY. That's one thing on this G account is that I would be aware of is that in any of these kinds of scenarios, if you've got high risk and it's usually going to be on a token that is already a, a bit volatile, just be aware that the staking destinations or the reward destinations may also be as volatile. So there are scenarios that you have to be cautious on. This is just general awareness. And I know you guys are all very cautious in terms of scams and being very careful with your wallets, all those kind of things, just taking those extra precautions around things, even like this, when you are plugging into a site to offload your tokens for a staking uh, mechanism, uh, just be very aware of what you're doing Always be very cautious and always be very diligent in the process to, to get that done. So just, you know, it's not a bad thing because some of these projects actually are paying out. If you think about Axie just paying out these ridiculous rewards, uh, I think that is a big one. All right. So moving on, we are going to get into uh, a ton of stuff here on the show, we're going to continue to drop a lot of our top 20. Uh, we've, we've got our metaverse uh, projects coming out, our altcoin projects coming out. If you haven't seen the Crypto Power Index, make sure and click the link below because that'll get you into understanding what we're doing with the CPI. It's essentially a tool that we use internally and we've made it available to you guys to help with understanding some of the trends around sentiment and amplification on some of these projects, because in many cases, we can identify this stuff a little bit early, so it gives you either one research that helps you say, hmm, maybe I need to go dive into this one a little more, and maybe open up your eyes on where a project might be going in terms of trends, because so, that's something we do as well. It's a 12-week run that we do on uh, historical, and then we do our regular top 20 in a variety of different uh, assets there as well. All right. We've got one more poll and then we'll jump out of here. This is a good one, I think, that you guys can kind of take a look at. 
Which tokens are you currently staking? All right, Matic, there you go. So Matic is a good one, stable coins holding in uh, with Polkadot and then Axie. So it looks like my bag. I like that one. Yeah, 177 votes, perfect. All right, you guys, if you're listening in over on the podcast right now, the best place to do uh, anything with us is right here on the YouTube channel. It's where all of these kinds of things will happen. We do a lot of breakdown and analysis, the TA, a, a breakdown of our sentiment data, all that kind of stuff is right here on the channel. And of course, all you have to do is search Paul Barron Network. Like and subscribe, and that's gonna get you in. And of course, if you're really adventurous, join in on the Diamond Circle, because that's gonna be a cool part for some cool giveaways that we're doing on an ongoing basis here on the channel, where we give back to our community in a big way. If you wanna to reach to me, reach out to me, just do it out on Twitter. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Tech Bath.